On today's show, I will tell you why I believe Francisco Alvarez is set for a monster season in 2024. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on X at Finkelstein Ryan. You also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. And we're going to talk about Francisco Alvarez today because he's a player that I think I am about as excited to watch this season than anyone else on this Mets roster. You know, you could think that Francisco Alvarez or Pete Alonso, Brandon Nemo, these guys are going to have great seasons, and I do believe that. But we've seen that before. Francisco Alvarez is still this guy that you can dream on because in his first taste of big league action, where he wasn't supposed to play 120-plus games, he was supposed to be in triple A, but Omar Narvaez goes down. He gets thrust up and has to learn how to handle a big league rotation. He's got to deal with a veteran manager and Buck Showalter that wanted to bring him along, you know, slowly in the beginning. He's got to prove himself at the bat. That's a lot to put on a kid who was what, you know, 21 years old last year. He hit 209. Obviously, you'd like to see that average better. 284 on base, 437 slug. Overall numbers weren't you know, incredible. His OPS plus was 95. WRC plus was 97. Those are stats that measure hitters on a league average of 100. So he was slightly below average offensively. But he was great by all defensive metrics. And he hit 25 home runs. And he had stretches where he showcased the ability to carry a lineup from a catcher position in a way that we haven't seen in a Mets uniform since Mike Piazza. And I, I don't you know, say those words lightly. There's been other catchers, you know, Paulo Duke at his moments. Wilson Ramos in 2019 had a decent season. You know, Travis Darno was certainly good for stretches. But carrying the lineup from a catcher position, we just haven't seen it often. And Alvarez did that for a couple of months last year, but he was too inconsistent. So you look at how projection models are viewing him for this season, and I just think they don't know what to do with him. He's one of those players that's really hard to project. If you go to Fangrass, there's multiple different models that you can look at that project what a player is supposed to do this season. They have ATC, Steamer, and Fangrass depth chart available right now to be seen on Alvarez's page. There's also Zips, which we'll get into in a second. All the models are projecting 25 to 27 home runs, which is what he did last year. They're projecting 66 to 70 RBIs last year at 63. The slash line is 230 for the average, 315 for the on base, 460 for the slug. So up across the board, you would think that that would mean more home runs, but hey, they're not projecting that. That's fine. Those projections have them at a 775 OPS. Last year, there were five catchers in baseball with an OPS of over 775, basically all over 800. Will Smith was the lowest at 797, but you had Sean Murphy leading the league at 844. And then it went down from there. The Contreras brothers were up there, Adley Rutschman, Will Smith. So this projection has him within spitting distance of the best catchers in baseball. But I want to talk about zips. Okay, zips, and this comes straight from LB.com. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. But it's a system of player projections developed by Fangrass Dan Simborski which uses growth and decline curves based on a player type to find trends. So to find you know, similar player types from the past, find trends, and then factors in those trends into past performance of those players to come up with projections. This system uses statistics from the previous four years for players from ages 24 to 28 and weights more recent seasons heavier. For younger or older players, it uses weighted statistics from only three previous seasons. Okay, so... You're looking at this projection model, right? It takes in everything, all, all these different factors. What Zip spit out for Francisco Alvarez was a 230 average, 
321 on base, 436 slug. So very similar to the other projection miles, but lower on the slugging percentage. 23 home runs, 73 RBIs, a 107 OPS plus. Okay, so that is um, OPS plus again, league average 100, above average hitter. But what I love about Zips, if you go to the article on the New York Mets, we're going to be talking about this a bunch on the show over the next couple of weeks here. They have the 80th percentile outcome and the 20th percentile outcome. So essentially grading out a boom or a bust, right? And then the middle ground is what you see as his Zips projection. So the 20th percentile outcome, if he has a, a bust of a season, 200 average, we just saw that. 292 on base, basically just saw that. Slug down to 379. So a similar offensive season with less home runs, an 87 OPS plus, a 1.3 F4. 80th percentile outcome for Francisco Alvarez. If he booms this season, if he has a breakout year, 256 average, 348 on base, 496 slug from the catcher position, a 130 OPS plus, 30% better than league average from the catcher position 3.7 f4 that ops if you combine his on-base percentage and his slug and that 80th percentile outcome would be 844 which would exactly match what sean murphy did last year for the braves the best ops for a catcher in all of baseball francisco alvarez's ceiling is something to dream on he could be such a special player and i believe he's going to be able to tap into that ceiling because all we see from Francisco Alvarez is him working hard all off season. I think this guy's an absolute grinder. I think he loves baseball more than anything else. I think he has a, a desire to be the best because if I'm not mistaken, he has it tattooed on his neck. I think this kid's going to have a monster season. I want to explain what that looks like a little bit more in the next segment here. First though, uh, today's episode is brought to you by game time. What would you do with an extra 100 bucks in your pocket if you're in Las Vegas? Maybe you go out to dinner. Maybe you put 100 bucks on red and see if you can double that at the roulette table. A lot of things you can do. Go play some slots. Well, game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. And right now, they're giving users $100 off when they buy a big game ticket with the code Vegas100. Personally, I love the Game Time app because I like to go to basketball games. I like to go to Panthers games. I'm in South Florida. So for me, you know, when I want to see whatever's going on in my area, I pull up the app and I can look at the lowest ticket price feature. I can get a great deal, see all the upcoming events, whether that's the sporting events, the comedy, the, the music, the concerts, a lot that you can choose from. Game Time is the only ticketing app that also gives you a complete peace of mind with your purchase. Because you can see the view of your seat before you arrive. You know exactly what to expect. You can buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps, you're all set. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Right now, all Game Time users get $100 off big game tickets with the code VEGAS100. Terms apply. Just download the Game Time app and use the code VEGAS100 for $100 off big game ticket. Or if you're not going to go to the big game, you can just use the code locked on and get $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, like I said, I believe Francisco Alvarez is set to have a massive season. And I talked about the work ethic that plays into it. I think he's going to show up a better player. I think he's going to be locked in. And I also think, on a side note that we'll get to a little more in a minute here, I think he's going to play a lot of games too. I mean, last year he played 123, I believe. I wouldn't be shocked if he got over 140. I, I, I wouldn't because right now the DH spot is, is vacant. Obviously, Mark Vientos, DJ Stewart, Starling Marte, these guys all factor into that mix. But if Alvarez hits the way I think he can, he's going to end up stealing some games at DH when he gets his rest. Now, there's also many games where we just want him off his feet entirely, but I think he's going to play a lot of games. This is where you don't want to burn him out, but this is where those knees are young that you get him behind the dish as much as you can. And here's what I just look at when I, I view his season last year. Comes up, there was the, the growing pains in April. May, he's solidified. 
21 games played, grabs the starting job, and plays unbelievable. Okay, he hit 292, 363 on base, 667 slug. He hit seven home runs. He had six doubles. He had a 176 WRC plus. So he was 76% better than your league average hitter. I mentioned being able to carry a lineup like Piazza. That was Piazza-esque numbers for a month, just a month. But really good stuff. Then league adjusts, okay? June, he fell off. Hit 151, 205 on base, 329 slug. Still hit four home runs, which is good. Only one double, 45 WRC plus, so 55% worse than your league average hitter. So he goes from uh, you know, 76% better all the way down to 55% worse. Streaks of the season for him. Well, then he turns it right back around in July. 20 games played, eight home runs. Didn't hit a double, but still eight home runs that month. 16 RBIs. He hit 275, 351 on base, 623 slug. A 163 WRC plus, 63% better than your league average hitter. You put those two great months that sandwiched a really bad month. You put that all together. A three-month span, which is about half of a season. 66 games played. He hit 238, 306 on base, 537 slug. So what's that? An 843 OPS. Remember that 80th percentile outcome OPS, 844. It's right there, okay? 19 home runs, 40 RBIs, 128 WRC plus. What was that 80 percentile projection at? It was a 130 OPS plus. Right in line, 2.4 F4. Now, I hope that if you take that three-month sample and you put it into the season this year, I would hope he gets on base more, maybe slugs a little bit less, hits for a higher average. All that would be great. I, I would hope that it's not just incredible offense for two of those months and and a horrible month. Maybe it's really good instead of incredible for two of those months. And it's just slightly below average in the other month. Hitters are still going to be streaky. That's fine. But you know, to have less of those extremes would be great. But if you just take that three month sample for what it was in 66 games, and you multiply that over a full season and you say he's going to play 132 games. I might even tack on a little bit more to that, but hey, we'll just we'll keep it soft. 132 games played, 30 home runs, 80 RBIs from the catcher position, and the F4, if you double it, would have been 4.8, so about a five win catcher. During those three months, by the way, look at all the stats, combined defense and offense. Look at his wins above replacement. Will Smith was the only catcher better in baseball than Francisco Alvarez because that's how good he was. In those two other months, that's how good he was behind the dish defensively. Here's the other things that I look at that makes me believe Alvarez has more in the tank. In the minor leagues, since 2021, his first real full season playing, you know, low A to high A. So real really getting the you know first taste of full season minor league baseball. Since that year, 2021. And all of his different stops, low A, high A, double A, um, triple A, he's never walked in, never walked less than 12% of the time. Last year, he walked 8% of the time. The projection models have him a little bit less than 10%, you know, 9.5%. I think he's going to walk more this year. I really do. He never got on base less than a 350 clip. I think he can get on base at a 350 clip. Again, we refer back to that 80th percentile projection model from Zips. 256 average. Can Alvarez hit 260 this year? I think he could. Or even anything over 250 is great. 348 on base. I'd sign up for that. And I think where he can really make things interesting is if he can get that slug over 500 because he's hitting so many home runs. 496 slugs amazing. I, I, look, of course, you're going to sign up for an eighth percentile outcome you know, any day of the week. That's amazing. It'd be a great season. But I just think that the power he can tap into, especially if he gets into 140 games, I do believe there's 40 home run pop with Francisco Alvarez because he had a month where he hit seven, another month where he hit at eight. 
So if you can hit eight home runs in a month, you're six months in a season, right? If you average you know, just over six home runs a month, between six and seven, that's a 40 home run year. And I'm not saying he's definitely going to hit 40. That's lofty. But if he gets well past 30, if he can clear 35 from your catcher position while playing the good defense, that's still a key. This guy is going to have a special season, and he's going to put himself on the map as one of the best catchers in baseball. He's already a top 10 catcher in baseball in my eyes. So just baseball.com. I told you uh, on yesterday's show, I believe, we've already done our rankings for all these different players. They're going to start to trickle out on the Just Baseball show starting in February. So um, you know, those will come over time where you can see what we ended up writing. But I ranked all, all the different positions. and I, I try my best to check my Mets bias. And so with doing that, sometimes I end up knocking guys just because I don't want to feel like I'm I'm biased against them. But I think I had him seventh or eighth. I think right now the, the conversation is who's the, the better young catcher, Francisco Alvarez or Gabby Moreno for the Diamondbacks. And Gabby Moreno had a lot of moments in that World Series run that they went on. But if the defense can be close to similar, and Alvarez did that this year, the power he has to dream on just separates him. And that's what I want to talk about in the next segment, why Francisco Alvarez has every chance to be Top five catcher in the game this year. He could have a season where he's even better. Top three. I want to talk about the other catchers in baseball and what Alvarez can do to really belong in that company and and pass some of those guys and be ranked even higher in regards to the top catchers in baseball. We'll go through all that in just a minute. First, though, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. There's only a couple of weeks left in the NFL season, but there's still time to get on the action with FanDuel America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. It's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use. There's so many different ways that you can bet, like same game parlays. Uh, you can find bets in the new Explorer tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, which is the best wa- way to find popular parlays. And it's a lot of stuff you can find there right? NBA action every night. There's always some parlays that you can lay some money on, whether it's just betting on a couple different teams or betting on a team result with a player result, points, rebounds, assists, three-pointers made, all that stuff you can find at FanDuel. Not to mention MLB futures are are starting to trickle in as well. So a lot you can find over at FanDuel. Again, you place a $5 bet, you get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. Is it FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup? FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Throughout the season, I will be providing the most devoted listeners of the show with some bonus content if they become Locked On Mets Insiders, our texting service, where I can send updates anytime. So I'll be sending the lineup card out there every day. Uh, you know, I'll be looking to you know, send stuff anytime there's a transaction that takes place, if I write a story about the Mets. And if you just have a question for me, you can ask it anytime. Appreciate all of you head over to subtext you can find the link in the episode description or go to subtext.com slash locked on mets and where will alvarez rank among the best catchers in baseball by year's end i don't believe he's going to pass a couple of guys one of them is adley rutschman best catcher in baseball for my money last two years five win seasons as he made his debut and then had his second year with the baltimore orioles the guy's unbelievable um alvarez is more pop career high for rutschman's at 20 home runs but he's getting on base at a 370 clip. It's just a different type of player, more complete player, a guy that's seriously moving the needle on winning in Baltimore. Will Smith has just been underrated for years, uh, a four-win catcher basically the last three years, and sometimes even better than that. His career high in home runs, though, is 25. So what you're seeing with those guys is they might be more complete players. But what Alvarez can do is if he's hitting his home runs, he can maybe move the needle a little bit more. Not say he's going to be the best catcher of baseball, but he could be in the conversation with those guys if he reaches his you know, top outcome. Cal Rowley is the one competition when it comes to power. He has led the league among catchers at home runs the last two years, 27 in 2022, 30 last year. 
and over four wins per season each of those years. So Cal Rally, really good in Seattle. Then you have the two Contreras brothers, Wilson Contreras, who've been around longer uh, with the Cubs, now the Cardinals, four straight full seasons. So that's ignoring 2020, where he had 20 or more home runs. Career high of 24 home runs back in 2019. Juice ball year. Really good offensive catcher, but doesn't do it with the glove. His brother, though, now does with the glove. Unbelievable season with the Brewers. Really improved defensively drastically. Hit 289. Got on base at a 367 clip. 457 slug. Just a great year. 5.4 F4. He was awesome. JT Romuto has been uh, the guy that has sort of led catchers for some time, but he had a down year last year. His career high in home runs is 25. He's hit over 20 um, four times. And his best season was in 2022 where he had a six and a half win year. I don't know if Alvarez will ever do that, but the, the thing about all of these guys is I can make the case that Alvarez could have more power than any of them. And that's what really excites me thinking about him long-term. Those two components, if he can defend at a high level, make his home runs, the sky's the limit, especially if he rounds those other parts of his game into form. If he can hit for a higher average, instead of hitting around the Mendoza line, he'll hit closer to 250. That's going to be massive. If he can get on base at a 330 clip, 340 clip, if he can get up to that 350 clip, they're going to be cooking with gas when it comes to Francisco Alvarez because I believe he's going to slug you know, at least close to 450 moving forward. Didn't quite get there last year because the average was so low, but I mean, the home runs were there. If he hits 30 home runs and hits 250, that slug's going to be a lot closer to 500 than even 400. So I, I just think about how much you can dream on and the fact, again, that this is a dude that was ballsy enough to get the best tattooed on his neck in red ink. I mean, it takes a certain kind of athletic freak to, to, and you know, not only just athletic, to, I, I guess if I wanted to, I could get, t- you know, the best tattooed on my neck. My wife would be pretty pissed if I did that one. Um, but you know, it, it takes a certain mentality. It takes a certain mindset to brand that across your neck and then to back that up in the gym, on the field. When you see the way this guy's attacking his workouts defensively, when you see the way he's attacking weights in the gym and you see him, you know, taking these you know massive medicine balls and getting in a catcher's crouch and just launching them. I think this guy's going to improve in so many ways. You know, last year he, he flashed the arm strength, wasn't really accurate with the arm. That's a big thing he's got to improve. And I think he will. Having another year to develop and be able to call a better game, that's going to be really massive. To just be more comfortable with what it takes to go through the constant work when it comes to strategizing as a catcher and being in all those meetings at the big league level. To go through less slumps offensively and to play more. I think there is a world where Francisco Alvarez is the best player on the Mets in the next five years. Now, that's not to say that I'm predicting it's going to happen. I'm saying there's a world. You look at the 80th percentile Zips outcome. That's going to get even better if he has a massive season this year. And obviously, there's good players on this team. Francisco Lindor, Brandon Emma, they're going to be here for a while. You hope Alonzo is too. But, you know, As all the way back to when he was a prospect, people always threw that around the best Mets catcher since Piazza. And you know what? I remember when they did that with Travis Darno too, at at a, at a certain point, I don't think it was anywhere near the same extent where that was thrown around, but I remember it uttered in a couple places because there there was a void at this position for a long time. Crazy thing is look at the farm system and it's as loaded a catcher as it's ever been. So you finally figured it out, potentially at the big league level. And now you got all these guys coming to the pipeline that could become fantastic trade chips or backups. And there's a lot that the Mets can do at this position moving forward. But the best catcher since Piazza, he still has to live up to it. It's one season where his overall offensive numbers were still below average, but it was 25 home runs and great defense. And if he can just build on that and be couple ticks better in a couple different areas. 
he's going to be one of the best players on this team very soon. He already is, um, but you know, he can really take that leap into you know stardom this year, into being an all-star, into winning a silver slugger. There's a lot that you could dream about with Francisco Alvarez, and I think this is the type of player and the type of story that Mets fans need to get behind going into this year because you need to acknowledge maybe the shortcomings of this team in the present, but you have plenty to dream about for the future. Okay, that's going to be all for today's episode of Locked on Mets for this week on Locked on Mets, unless we get a reliever signing over the weekend. David Robertson to the Rangers, by the way, 11 to 12 million, I believe it was. No surprise there to, to get that much money to go to a team that's coming off a World Series. I get it. Uh, but we'll see if the Mets make a signing. If not, I'll be back on Monday. If you're listening on the audio side, make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, would love it if we could get to 8,000 subs uh, before opening day. We're getting somewhat close, so I appreciate all of you with that subscribe button. Appreciate everyone who becomes a Locked on Mets insider to be part of our texting service. You can find the link in the episode description. We'll go to subtext.com slash Locked on Mets. You can follow me on X at Finkelstein Ryan. You can head over now and watch Locked On Sports Today, which is the first ever 24-7 streaming channel covering everything in the world of sports with our local experts from each team and our league-wide experts from each league. You can find Locked On Sports Today streaming 24-7 on YouTube.